and uh, CRT also make this radio which is a 6900N. Now this radio has been around for yonks. It used to be sold under the Anytone brand as the Anytone 5555 triple or quad quad five. Um, it's more user friendly definitely if you're coming from a CB radio. You've got the familiar channel LEDs that you'll be use, used to. There's a lot more buttons and uh, switches on the radio itself which means you don't have to delve into the menu system. If you want to go into the menu system it's just the same as really the 9900. There is uh, a lot of additional features that are based in the menu system itself. But however as I say, changing bands, things like that, changing modes, you've got traditional kind of uh, switches and uh, sort of pots to use. So it feels a lot more like a CB radio, but like the 9900, of course, this is a 10 meter mobile transceiver. Once again, it is designed to use on 10 meters with a ham radio license. Um, they are converted to use wide banded to use 11 meters, but the same thing applies. If you use this radio, you will be breaking the law in the UK and you do risk prosecution. So this, to be honest, is the radio that I recommend for getting people back into CB, getting to people on sideband. It's also quite a bit cheaper than the 9900. This typically sells around about 145 to 150 pounds delivered in the uh, UK. And I should imagine it's probably about the same in dollars in the USA. So I think this actually is quite a good value, especially if you compare it there to the uh, to the grant. It's pretty much half the uh, half the price. So. I'm going to go into this radio in a little bit more detail, just sort of um, show you around it. But before I do that, you know, you have to be a little bit wary when you're buying this radio, especially if you're going to try and buy one uh, sort of second hand. There's quite a few of these around on the market and they sort of generally were about sort of probably 70 to 80 percent of the new costs. So bear that in mind. Don't get caught up on eBay kind of uh, buying auction frenzy when you can get a new one for just about 145 pounds um, but there are two versions of this radio as well there is a high powered version and a low powered version to be honest if you're going to get one and you're going to slip over to the dark side of Ofcom I would say get the uh, get the high powered version so anyway I'm just going to quickly now go through some of the uh, some of the sort of buying options when you come to buy this radio so you uh, sort of don't get your fingers burnt so uh, stick with this video for some more information about the uh, 6900 as I mentioned this radio used to be sold as the Anytone 5555 and indeed it still is now the later version as far as I'm aware with some improvements is the 6900N and to be honest that's the one that you want to look out for. Now on the outside the radios look exactly the same but if you look to the left hand side of the uh, this fascia here you'll see that the Anytone says 10 meter radio and also the LED part of the display which shows you the channel on the Anytone it is green and on the later 6900N it is blue. But if that wasn't confusing enough there is another model called the 5555N that's also made by Anytone and that is an entirely different model so uh, just be a little bit careful if you're bidding especially used on eBay that you're buying the uh, correct radio. Another thing to consider is the radio is sold at two different power settings one at 21 watts sideband 12 watts AM FM and a more powerful version is 40 watts FM and 33 watts sideband so you want to make sure that you're buying the correct model. If you're buying in the UK, well, your first stop will probably be eBay, but just make sure that the radio is pre-programmed with the 40 UK FM channels supplied. Some, some sellers will want to charge you a little bit extra for this. You can buy a cable and program it yourself, but don't get ripped off by the prices. One shown here at $39.99, that is a complete rip-off. Expect to pay around about £15 to £17 for the connection cable. You normally do uh, get the software where you can sort of download it from the net. I've never done this myself. I can't advise you on uh, programming a radio, but I know people like to do this themselves and the option is there. One thing to consider though is that there's no USB external socket on this radio. You have to remove the casing and connect it straight to the PCB. So that probably does invalidate your warranty. So all things considered, if you're buying in the UK, I would recommend that you buy from Knights. Now I'm not in any way associated with Knights, I'm not on commission, anything like that, but I have bought radios from Knights before. They're a very good service, they're very quick at making the delivery and they will program the radio to the FM band for no extra cost. Now, one thing that 
I feel lets the radio down is the mic that it is supplied with. For some reason they supply it with the M6 microphone and not the better M9 microphone. And I had some very mixed radio reports when I used this with the standard mic. And what I did, I took the microphone apart and I made a video on that and I found that there was some very dense grey foam actually by the inside the microphone against the element. And when I removed this, I found that my audio did in fact improve. And I think that will be fine for most people, but I wanted a slightly better audio, so doing a little bit of uh, research on the internet, I found that this rather cheap, grey-looking KPO microphone worked surprisingly well. And I did end up buying this microphone from Knights. It's pretty cheap. I mean, it's like £10 if you have it delivered with the uh, radio. And once I fitted this microphone, I got some very good audio reports and I'll leave a little pop-up to the video from this at the end of uh, this video and you can go away and listen and see what you think. Now Knights also sell the standard M9 microphone which is on the 9900. Uh, unfortunately that, that comes with a 6 pin plug and you need a 4 pin plug to use it with a 6900 so if you're good with a soldering iron you don't mind changing the plug over it might be worth investing maybe in that microphone or I'm sure that Knights will be able to supply it with a 4 pin plug at an additional cost. Now unfortunately a radio of this power won't run on a standard 3 to 4 amp power supply. Now the stats say that the radio draws about sort of 6 amps but that's the lower powered version. I think on the safe side you're going to need possibly a 10 to 15 amp power supply. Now if you're going to stick with the radio hobby and you, you perhaps buy more powerful radios in the future it might be at this stage cost effective to perhaps invest in a 30 amp supply and I know they're not particularly uh, cheap but if you are on a very tight budget you can use these LED rack power supplies now I've used uh, three of these and I think they're absolutely fine as a switch mode power supply there is a little bit of additional work involved I did do a video on this again which uh, you can find on my channel and basically you just need to put these into an enclosure and uh, I think they work absolutely fine right that covers the basics in uh, a purchase in a 6900. I think it's time now we had a closer look at the radio and I'll just run through some of the basic controls. So here we go, here's my 6900 uh, set up with a little Sharman Multicom uh, 30 amp power supply which I am going to do a video on this. Someone has requested that, I'll do a video on this just a little quick look at that, uh, what it costs and things. So as you can see here's my KPO DMC 110 P6. It's not eye candy this microphone, but I have got some very very good reports on this. And if I so say if you pop off and watch the uh, video that will pop up at the end, you'll hear the difference between this one and the uh, and the standard mic. So here's the radio itself. Um, it's quite nice, isn't it? I mean, you got you got very nice sort of bright LCD display there. I believe you can you can dim this down, but what you can't do is uh, dim down the LED display, and, <laughs> and that is quite bright, especially if you're in the shack at uh, night time. But I suppose you could always sort of block that out. Or if something. we look at the rotary pot controls first, well, your first button is just your volume control, and the radio does have a quite a nice size speaker. It's uh, it fires underneath the unit. But as you can hear, it is uh, plenty loud. And then the inner pot there is just a standard sort of squelch. And it is quite a nice squelch. It's fairly smooth. It doesn't sort of pop in and out. And uh, that's fairly... Ex and it's also the uh, on-off control as well. Next one is E-Tone. This is uh, Echo Tone. Now, it depends how you feel about kind of echo sort of microphones and echo tones in general. To be honest, I'm not a great fan. Uh, I don't think they really do too much for the uh, sort of audio, especially on sideband. Maybe they're probably AM, FM, they might work a little bit better on sideband. So, uh, to be honest, I just don't touch that. I leave that off. Okay, your next part is quite interesting because this is your receive power, the RF gain, which generally on, uh, as I say, on sideband you'll start off with that fully on and then if, if you have got quite a lot of QRM noise you can gradually sort of break, break that off, uh, just sort of take some of the noise down. But what is interesting is you've got on the inner pot there, you've got a full control over the RF power, basically the transmit power of the radio. 
all the way from about one watt on FM, and if you turn that all the way around uh, clockwise, goes up to uh, 40 watts FM, or I think it's 33 watts sideband, if you've got the, uh, the high powered model. Obviously I think that's 12 watts and 21 if you've got the low powered model. But that's quite useful for a number of reasons. Firstly, you might not want to run full power all the time, say on FM. You know, 20 watts is probably quite sufficient. And also in the future, if you want to run this into a little linear amplifier, you can see I've got a couple of little marks there on my uh, sort of fascia. You can turn this power right down to possibly sort of one or two watts, three watts or something, which is probably ideal for a little uh, linear amplifier. Next uh, control there is, is your band control. Now then, if you're buying this in the UK and you buy it pre-programmed from Knights, for example, they will put the UK 40 FM channels on band F, and that's quite uh, that sort of quite sort of convenient. Um, the rest of the channels cover a wide spectrum. If you've got a radio that has been wide banded to use on 11 meters. It will cover right away from the bottom part of 11 meters, um, right away through, all the way up to the uh, to the handbands. As you can see, it will go right away up there to uh, 28295. Now, of course, you can't use those handbands unless you're you're licensed. Yeah, don't don't be an idiot, idiot. Don't be a pirate. Respect the uh, respect the hobby. But they're there that you can listen, and it's quite useful. Uh, certainly, if you if in future you plan to take your sort of foundation course, and then possibly you know you intermediate. Well, you can if they if it's active in your area, you can listen to the uh, to the handbands, and uh, yeah, that's sort of something that's quite useful. So next control is just the mode control, um, CW, Morse code, AM, FM, upper and, uh, and lower sideband, sort of uh, quite, quite useful. But of course you do have to remember that even though, for example, if I put this into band F, that this is programmed for the UK 40 FM channels, it won't automatically switch this across to FM, you do have to do it. It's a manual radio, you do have to manually make sure that uh, you're in the FM mode. And then finally you've got the clarifier. Now, I've got to be honest, I'm not that keen on the clarifier on this radio. Um, it's a very nice size control. It's a good size knob, but what, there's two things I don't like about it. First thing is it's a clicky clarifier, which means it, well, clicks basically. Um, I prefer a smooth linear sort of clarifier and then the other, the other thing I don't like is that when you do click the clarifier it briefly, very briefly, mutes the sound of the receive which makes it that little bit harder. It's hard to demonstrate but if you listen here So do you hear that? It's cook, 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 and, and that kind of makes it a little bit tricky if you're trying to. But in saying that, it does work, and uh, of course, it also gives you a uh, setting now on the. Con you can see the sort of frequency change. Now then, next we've got the uh, channel select. Now this is this is probably the best thing about the radio if you're coming from a CB radio, because not only do you get your ordinary channel sort of LED which select which you're going to be quite used to and quite comfortable with you you also got the frequency as well so it's a good opportunity as you go up the uh, say the FM band you know you can sort of see the way the frequency sort of chains at about 100 sort of megahertz there just goes up so it's quite useful quite useful to uh, to actually sort of read off and learn some of the uh, some of the frequency there so that covers the sort of basic kind of use of the radio using it really as, as sort of a CB and you've got the uh, you've got the function switches here now another useful feature that I do like on this radio which was something that we would have loved to have these on the CB back in the day is a scan button so you can press the scan and the radio will then go around and chat and flick through all of the faulty channels and you can adjust the sensitivity on the scan via the squelch or as, to, as to how much you want the uh, signal when you want the scan to actually stop you know how much signal you want and if you turn the squelch up press the scan it's going to prove me a lie there it goes and there we go so quite useful you know if you're in an area uh, which can be like this area for example and there's very few people on the radio all times of the day you can just have the radio in the background with the squelch turned up have it on uh, on scan through the 40 channels and then when someone comes on the radio will automatically stop and uh, you can hear 
the person sort of transmit him. It does have a Roger bleep, <laughs> like all, like all CB radios. Um, it also via the menu the tone is uh, adjustable from a really horrible sort of loud bleep you can adjust it down to a sort of quite a nice discreet bleep if you want to use the roger bleep um roger bleep generally on sideband it's a little bit of a kind of a well let's shall we, shall we say it, it it's not an agreed sort of point some ham ham operators for example absolutely hate roger bleeps um, and if you go on to the triple five if you go on to the uh, the triple nickel as they call it um, and you've got the Roger Bleep on, sometimes ham operators won't even talk to you because you're running, you're running your Roger Bleep. It is quite useful, um, certainly if you're, if you're trying to receive a station, you know, that's very distant. Sometimes if you've got your bleep on and your signal's low, he'll know when you've stopped. But it's there anyway. You also have a noise blanker and an ANL filter. Um, to be honest, the noise blanker, it's not great. Um, I'm, maybe I'm comparing it to uh, an HF radio because they're sort of so much be better and it's not particularly brilliant DW I can't remember what that's for <laughs> I can't remember it's flashing at me you'll have to excuse me on that so basically th and these bu buttons quite often are multifunction as well if you press the menu button obviously you've got to uh, this is not a review of the radio by the way you've got a 10k Hertz shift Again, which is quite useful. Um, that, go, that goes back to sort of the day. That, that takes your frequency up 10k. Um, yeah, make sure you've not got that switched on um, because people will give you sort of reports that you're off frequency and things like that. Um, it's quite useful. You, when, when you transmit, you can uh, check your SWR. Just in, in the scale will uh, change from the power meter to the SWR meter. And then you have an emergency button, of course, which was your old-fashioned sort of uh, channel nine. Or if you hold the func press the function down, you can switch the uh, power meter off and on. So, like I say, um, I'm not going to go through all of the uh, the functions. I say there's people that uh, have done that, but that's a basic overview of the radio. Build quality-wise, it's not bad. Um, com de you know, depending on what, bearing in mind what you're paying here. Um, you know, this is roughly about 140 sort of five pounds. There is a little bit of play in uh, sort of some of the controls. Yeah, they're, they're not the last word in sort of quality. It's not as good as the Grant, but it's half. It's uh, it is sort of uh, half the price. So, like I say, to sum this video up, because it has gone on a quite a long time. You know, overall, it's a it is a nice quality radio. I do think perhaps. It's a shame they didn't ship it with the standard microphone there, the uh, M9 microphone that you got with the 9900. Um, and it's a bit of a pity that I feel that you maybe have to spend an extra £10, $12 or something to change the microphone. But like I said before, you know, um, try the mod first on the standard microphone, just pop the back off. You won't be invalidating your warranty by uh, messing around with a microphone and take out that little bit of um, grey foam. And then try it, depending on the, the uh, sort of audio tone of your voice, you might find that's completely uh, completely acceptable. I've got much better reports, like I said before, when I've done it. So there you go, the Superstar 6900N. Um, it's a good radio, it's a good starting radio for coming back onto CB. And as I say, with a power supply, um, you might be looking at maybe £190 if you buy sort of a sort of proper regulated sort of radio power supply, but you can get a cheap one for uh, sort of £10 or something like that. So uh, it's not really all that much of a problem. Okay, if you've uh, thanks for watching this video. Sorry, it was a bit of a long one. Um, please give it the old thumbs up. That helps me. That, I know then you, you, you're watching the videos and you're liking them. It encourages me to do a few more. I'm going to put up some uh, suggestions, little boxes that will appear at the end of the uh, video in reference with to the 9900 6900 there and the microphone and things like that so please sort of you know go off and uh, have a look at those if you want to sort of see the radio in action and sort of uh, learn some more as always the little subscribe logo will come up please subscribe to fred in the shed one if you want to see more radio stuff in the future but as for now thank you very much for uh, sticking through to the end of the video so i'd like to say cheers thank you stay safe and of course i'll catch you all on the next one.